morning something that's been really helpful to us in our understanding of uh, one another. And um, as we've gone on, it's also helped us understand the ministry that God's given us as well, but we'll get there, hopefully you'll be able to see that as we go on. I'm going to talk, um, start off this morning with what we call restoring the image of God. One of the things that you know has caused a lot of problems through the years and coming down through the church is that God has been seen primarily as male. And I know that as a counsel that has caused huge issues for a lot of women who, not because they have something against males, but have been very afraid of males. And so when God has been seen as a male down through history, it's something that not only is he seen as male, but he's seen as a fallen male. So it's very true that the way that we see God is through the lenses in our hearts that we have seen our own parents. If we've had a father that, or even a mother that is really angry all the time, really angry, that's how we'll see God. We'll see God as being an angry God. It's like the heart and uh, the lenses that we've seen our own parents through, we also project onto God. So this morning we want to just take some time and look at um, the image of God in masculinity and in femininity, because we're made in his image. Um, let's. I'm just going to, well-known verses, you don't need to turn if you don't want to, but it's Genesis chapter 1, um, starting at verse 26. I love these little, um, you get these little verses, these little lines that kind of give us uh, a glimpse into some of the conversations at the center of the universe. And here we've got this one of them. One of the other ones was, well, it wasn't a conversation, but uh, the other night when I was speaking about how Jesus considered equality with God not something to be grasped. It's like we're talking there about pre-incarnation. The pre-incarnation, the pre-incarnate Christ considering or thinking about something. And, uh, you know, I just kind of, I just love that. It just makes it all so personal somehow. When you realize, the same um, James brought out the other day too about, uh, from Isaiah, you know, where there's again a conversation at the center of the universe. And it's God saying, um, who can go for us? He's speaking to Isaiah. Who can go for us? And so it's kind of like every now and then there's, there's kind of like um, heaven breaks through to earth and we have a recording of what's going on a little bit. I think the most famous conversation at the center of the universe is John 17 where there's the intimate the relationship between the father and the son. And you all know about that. But this morning I'm just going to look at um, this one. Then God said, let us make man, or that word there is not, is not um, a gender, it's the generic word for mankind. So God says, let us make mankind in our image and in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth, over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind, or man, in his own image. In the image of a God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. So right here we've got this, this picture here of the Godhead deciding, let us make mankind in our image, in our image. So it's a, a group image. Uh, let them rule over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, over all the livestock, over all the earth, and every creature that moves along the ground. So God created man, mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it, etc., it's just, I just want to, at this point, I want to say something that might be a little controversial to you, but the command to rule was given to the image. 
It wasn't given to the to the male. It was given to the image of God as male and female, as masculine and feminine. It wasn't just given. It says, let them, let's make them in our image and let them rule. And I often like to say when I'm teaching something else, but I'll say it here, but I often like to say that one of the important things in Scripture when you're creating a doctrine is what they call the law of first mention. And so down through history, and we'll look at this probably in the next session, but down through history, there has been um, a doctrine or an understanding that's come through that women um, cannot take a place of leadership in a lot of denominations. However, here we see that God is actually laying the foundation for the man and the woman to rule together. God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them, and he blessed them. And he said to them, be fruitful in number, increase, and fill the earth and subdue it. Then it goes about, rule over the fish of the sea, amen, the birds of the air, and <laughs> you did a bit of ruling last night, I think. <laughs> The law of first mention, that's what the law of first mention is. If you want to understand anything, you go back to the first place it's mentioned in the scripture and then build from that point your understanding or your theology from that because God always builds vertically on the foundations of what he lays. Like a good builder, you build your building vertically off the foundations. And so if you go back to what is the foundational statement of anything, the very first time it's mentioned in the Bible, and then you start to build. And there's a lot of people that have just taken single scriptures from the New Testament, like, um, you know, I don't allow women to teach in church, etc. Um, and they just take that statement by itself, but you have to go back to where it's first mentioned. And you know, there's people today who talk about, um, you know, women can't be apostles or prophets or pastors and things. But when you go back to this first mention, the Lord tells them to have dominion together. And it's very specific. He said to them, have dominion. So the ruling is for the masculine and the feminine together. And it really only finds its fulfillment. You don't understand those New Testament scriptures until you put them on top of these Old Testament ones. This is a subject that James and I do together. <laughs> we hand the microphone backwards and forwards quite a lot in this particular message. But the, the, the thing is that... When we're talking about masculine and feminine, we're not talking about specifically male and female. Now, I want to make a huge difference in this because for this particular session this morning, this is not about men and women per se. It's about the masculine and the feminine that is the image of God. And when God made us male and female, he put within us his image, whether you're Married or not, there used to be a, and I don't know, maybe it's still in some denominations, but certainly one of the early um, churches that we went to, it was a, it was very, I don't know, it came out in so many things that unless you're married, you're, you're only half a person. And I remember um, a book that came out in those years, this is going back in the early 70s, but um, someone even gave the, the illustration of like, a broken eggshell, and so you're only half an eggshell when uh, you're not married, but um, so you need to find your partner so you can become the whole thing. Well, that's just absolute rubbish. God has put his image in us, and whether we're, whether we're single or married, we, are, we contain the image of God. Um, we each have masculinity, and we each have femininity. Because that is who he is. That is what he is like. He is masculine and feminine. And this thing, I, I mean, I, I, I love this stuff <laughs> because it, it explains to me so much about God, about creation and everything. But when we're talking about masculinity and femininity, we're speaking about it as a gender issue that is a greater reality than sex. Female... Sexuality or male sexuality is only one way in which